It's been one of the most amazing years of my life. A global search for a complete sense of well-being. Awesome. I'm Rachel Hunter. I've collected some of the most remarkable beauty and health secrets from my worldwide tour of beauty. I met some wonderful people. Love and makes people become beautiful. Who taught me how to achieve superior health and a long, happy life. <laughs> now that I'm home, it's time to share even more discoveries from my global travels. This time, some of the people I met were defying aging and living long, happy lives. So what are their secrets to well-being? <laughs> is it their special diet? One glass of wine every yeah. day is very good for your soul. Is it their exercise regime? It's definitely getting my heart rate up. Or their attitude to life? Beauty and consciousness is the same thing. So how can I change my life to be a bit more like them? When you're young, you never think about growing old. This is me at 16, about to start my modeling career overseas. But now I'm 46, growing old is something I think a lot more about. I got a taste of what living long can be like when I visited a small village in China. It's famous for its high number of locals living to over a hundred. This is Loi, a village in Hainan Island, China. It's not a wealthy community, which is a hallmark to many longevity regions around the world. But I have this feeling that Loi is rich in many other ways. One particularly well-known resident here is the 100-year-old Mr. Lee. Hi, Mr. Lee. His secret to a long life appears to be clearing out his windpipes. No, you're not done. Oh, we're going. And he sets a spirited pace on the 6K round trip from his village to the market. Oh my God, he's honestly racing me right now. Which he does every day. He can't win this race. He's already won the race. In this village, they believe a sense of purpose and community is key to a long life. And you don't get much closer than Mr. Lee's family and friends. This is Mrs. Lee. 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 This is Mr. Lee. Mr. Lee and Mrs. Lee. So it's the family of Lees. But as the island's reputation for health benefits and longevity grows, so too does its population. So I'm about to go and meet a couple that have traveled all the way from North China because they heard this place is good for long life. And they live in this Winnebago. Mr. Han Shir Gui and his wife Shi did a lot of research before deciding on this village for their retirement. Here the air is very good and the water is alkaline and rich in minerals. And the soil, fruits and vegetables are rich in selenium, which is very good for people's health. That's why I fell in love with this village. Moving here was part of Han's commitment to his wife of over 50 years to keep enjoying a long, happy life together. Do you think that being married is one of the secrets to having longevity? If the answer is yes, I'm moving. A happy marriage and a great attitude to life helps you have a long life. If only having a long marriage was that easy. But if it was a competition, one couple here would win hands down. I've um, had an amazing opportunity to meet um, this couple who are 105. They've been married since their 20s for 85 years. I think if you want to see life and happiness and longevity, it pretty much exists right here. It was lovely to meet you and see you. Thank you. <laughs> Selenium may also be one of the reasons people from this village in Hainan live long. It's plentiful here and essential to keeping our immune system healthy. Millions of people worldwide aren't so lucky though, with the soil quality in their back gardens. But in South America, I found another way to easily access this important nutrient. You can pretty much get all you need from one or two of these Brazil nuts a day. 
Selenium is a simple way to boost your chances of longevity because this powerful antioxidant is believed to protect against cardiovascular and viral diseases. I didn't find nuts high on the agenda in France though. Instead, there was an abundance of sugar, fat and rich foods. Talk about contrasts. I want to live inside this fridge. So I wanted to know how a diet like this can keep so many of the locals looking healthy. I'm in heaven. <laughs> Next to the cheese shop is the wine shop. <laughs> Amazing. The French love affair with wine is famous and also part of their daily diet, even at lunchtime. It's healthy. So I went looking for a winemaking professor to find out how all this indulgence can bring about well-being. We are a little bit anxious about aging, uh, you and me, but, <laughs> but we cannot avoid it. No, we can't avoid it. <laughs> so, what is a good, a good aging? First is to seem a little bit younger than your real age. Age. And naturally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So where does wine come into this, Dennis? The second thing is when you age, is to be more interesting. Are we talking about wine or women right now? I don't know. <laughs> more interesting, <laughs> more fascinating, and more yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Dennis de Bordier is convinced wine plays a key role in youthfulness and beauty, and not just because of its chemical components. Music and wine enter in your body and make you feel beautiful. Mm. One, one glass of wine every yeah. day is very good for, for, uh, for, uh, for your soul. I completely agree. The minute a scientist says, oh my God, red wine's great for you. So the next thing, everybody's drinking a bottle of wine. That's yeah. not the point. No, that's not the point. Moderate consumption is a, is a good consumption. Yeah. Moderation is of course the key to making the French diet work but a, a, a wide variety of, uh, of food uh, and, and uh, food which is Natural made by people who love what they do. And, and I think the most important in the life is to, to take time. If you are always uh, in the future, you, you cannot enjoy what you are doing now. Now. now is important. You make me want to grow <laughs> my own grapes now. Coming up, what have wrestling and kung fu got to do with a long, happy life? The roll and run in the dirt. <laughs> I'm exploring ancient disciplines for living longer. Yeah, if I go down now, I won't be able to get up. <laughs> <laughs> Exercise. It's a no-brainer on the wish list for good health and living longer. Personally, I enjoy all modes of exercise, like the laid-back approach, the booty-shaking approach. It's all in the hips and boobs, girls. And the traditional way of the hunter-gatherer. As you can see, it's quite hilly terrain, so they get very fit. Traveling the world gave me the chance to explore them all. So what did I find? I was in awe of the joyful approach of the Chinese to their exercise routines, on display at so many parks every morning, especially amongst the older people. This is amazing. Everywhere you look, there's activity going on. It's not about necessarily getting the heart pumping and sweating, it's about coordination and community exercise and flexibility. Regularity is also key to Chinese philosophy. As soon as you walk into this park, you hear this beautiful sound of the orchestra. Yeah. So if playing music gets you up and active every day, then that counts as exercise too. Everyone's encouraged to join in. I love it. It's beautiful. The music, it's just gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> Make your legs very strong, you keep your eye on the feather. It's definitely getting my heart rate up. What I love here is that the age, everybody's energized here. You know, a lot of these exercises are really community-based. In China, um, when you get older, it's just not good to be alone. So they encourage, everything is about community. The Chinese approach to everything in life is based in philosophy, and exercise is no exception. 
Yeah, this is a modern depiction of the yin-yang, and this represents the regular rhythm of change. Like, for example, the daily cycle and morning exercise is 5 to 7 a.m., let go of the old, embrace the new. So how can I make this um, apply to my life? So whether you're doing physical exercise or whether you're doing meditation, the most important is an activity that you enjoy, where you can lose yourself in it. I'm excited. I think this is amazing. I'm not usually one for routine, but I love the idea of getting my mind and body working together. So I wanted to test my boundaries with a martial art I haven't tried before, which embraces these ideas of yin and yang. He's practicing Shaolin Kung Fu, which can lead to enlightenment. It's quite amazing to watch, you know, thinking that Kung Fu, in my mind, was always fighting, but you can see here it's all about, you know, moving energy through the body and strength and balance. Most people know Kung Fu is from Bruce Lee. <laughs> Yeah, so in the movie, you know, he said, oh, this is Chinese Kung Fu. But they think Chinese Kung Fu is for fighting. Mm. But in fact, it's not. It's not. Kung Fu is not uh, only a martial art, it's a lifestyle. It's a philosophy and a, and a way of life. Yeah. OK, now follow me. Now, one, two, pluck and twist. Four, five, six, twist. Very good, perfect. Thank you, Wednesday, perfect. Okay, we'll try it again. Okay. okay Shaolin Kung Fu was originally developed by monks thousands of years ago. Just like this. And next goes down. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I go down there, I won't be able to get up. But even someone like me who trained in ballet can struggle with the complexities of this moving art form. Sweet. Ready to blank, break out the tango? The really beginning? Two. And I've got to admit, I got pretty caught up in this graceful combination of movement and concentration. Very good. Good job. Apart from the physical exercise, meditation is also an important part of Kung Fu. Do you see the balance of a very masculine and feminine? Yeah, that's about the yin and yang. Yeah. You understand yin and yang, that helps your daily life. Because stress for like, modern living, now people have more and more stress and, you know, anxiety, depression and anger in daily life. But with training Kung Fu and Tai Chi, we know how to breathe and get you away of your personal worry. I mean, you're meditating while you're doing what you're doing, right? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Western people, they do exercise in the gym room, but they're inside still think about the work. They're not really relaxed. Yeah, and they're watching their movies, and they're listening to their music, yeah, yeah. and it's just, they don't shut off. Yeah, not really, like, relaxed. Mm, it's amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, you come. It's so beautiful and graceful. Amazing. And manly, too. It's got masculine and feminine, which is important. OK, guys? <laughs> yes, the Chinese reminded me of how spirituality and movement are a great combination. <laughs> but their routines were a huge contrast to an exercise style I found at an Indian gym in Faranasi. What goes on here? This is here calling Akara. Akara. People come here, all the young generation, old, and they make exercise. This is totally natural. The equipment here seems to remain loyal to its ancient origins, mimicking the physicality and strength required in manual field work. This exercise, they make for the shoulder strong. It's amazing, the tradition of it. It's so great. Yay! Everybody's praying now before the workout. We are here most important. We keep our tradition and spirituality. One of the main events here appears to not only be the workout, but the chance to apply that muscle in the wrestling arena. And the roll and run in the dirt. <laughs> There's your connection to Earth. <laughs> But I'm not so keen to join in with this style. I want to connect like these people do, that it's not just about getting the big muscles, it's about honouring something. Do they also meditate? Yes. You guys have got this down. You guys have this down. It's, it's so inspiring to see all that stuff that we think we need back in the gym. I'm sorry, but I poo-poo to all you and your weights back at home. <laughs> Eat your heart out. Meditation, purpose, tradition and rituals, go find that at your gym. I don't think you'll find it. You also won't find me in a Western gym. Like millions of Indians who believe the secret to well-being and long life is practicing yoga. 
That's what I do. I've been doing yoga for about 10 years, um, on and off. Um, what would you start, what kind of yoga would you want to start with today? So control, balance and concentration. This is uh, important in yoga. We don't do this at home in yoga. <laughs> But after my travels in India, I now understand that yoga is less about exercise and more about going inside and quietening the mind to practice meditation. Up next, some inspirational thinking. To be full of, uh, of love. From some of my favorite people. I'm going to move in. <laughs> I want to hang out with you all day. <laughs> Some of the most exceptional people I met on my travels seem to live free of the fear of aging and even dying. <laughs> Along with eating right and exercising right, they had achieved what I call a right mind. What do you think the key is? It's uh, to be in peace, to be um, full of, uh, of love for <laughs> everybody. Yeah. For me, yeah. Isabella Pay embodies French style and vitality, and she fearlessly reinvigorated her modeling career five years ago at the age of 66. Yeah. Simple is beautiful, I think. So really find uh, who you are. Yeah. To, to take pride in yourself. Oui, oui, oui. Yeah. Oui, oui. Completely. Yeah. Completely. <laughs> Proud. <laughs> <laughs> Isabel also isn't afraid of exploring different ideas. So you have the most amazing book collection. And it's funny, it reminds me a lot of my books, so I kind of feel at home. Ayurveda features heavily, and discovering this holistic medicine and philosophy from India was a huge turning point in Isabel's health and happiness. After when I came back uh, to France, I was changed, I was healthy, strong, happy. <laughs> it's the same thing, beauty and consciousness. Meditation is very important every day to come inside and uh, listen and stop with the, the, the ordinary life you feel you are loved by the energy. Those are to me the most important things as well, so to hear you say that, mm. and the way you say that is, is very important. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. beautiful. Meditation as a way of gaining a right mind came up a lot on my travels, especially in India, where my search for true happiness brought me up against one of my biggest fears, death. All this chaos with the motorbikes and the cows and the dogs. There's these people with their loved ones um, making their way towards the Gandhis. It's extraordinary. In the holy city of Varanasi, I discovered death is woven into the fabric of daily life and embraced by many. I don't even know how to feel. I'm kind of a little bit numb right now. Millions of Hindus worldwide believe being cremated on the Ganges here leads to salvation in the afterlife. Right behind me is where everybody here brings their loved ones to be cremated, which is quite extraordinary to see something so blatant in front of you. Death here is treated like any other rite of passage, and I wanted to find out more. Professor Shastri and his wife retired to Varanasi because dying in a holy city puts them in pole position for the afterlife. Can you tell me your story? To explain their beliefs, the retired professor of physics used the analogy of a light bulb. You are a bulb, and as long as the energy comes from, from top, you will work, and the current which makes it work is God. And after the bulb is finished, uh, used, you put another bulb, isn't it? <laughs> At the same place. Exactly. It's so true. This continues until you are attainment to the salvation. Making your mind empty is the basic uh, requirement for putting God inside. My meditation and concentration of the mind. So death just does not scare you whatsoever? 
Scary? Yeah. No, 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 we... You look shocked then when I said that. Scary, no scared by death. We become the current. Mm. You are mm. forever. That's beautiful. The Varanasi is the place where you don't have fear for death. And I'm going to move in. <laughs> I want to hang out with you all day. <laughs> So there it was again, meditation and going inside as the way to letting go and finding happiness and ultimate longevity, which extends way beyond the life we already know. I found my supreme teacher on gaining a right mind though, further south in India. Sadhguru is a world leading spiritual philosopher who also had something important to say about meditation. Meditativeness is a quality, it's not an act. People think it's something to do. It's not something to do, it's a consequence. Yeah. Because societies have become <laughs> wholly goal-oriented, they want the fruit, they don't want the tree. Yeah. Now, you just nurture the tree, fruit will fall anyway, you know? Worldwide, millions of people follow Sadhguru's insights into happiness and enlightenment. So, of course, I was curious about his attitude to dying. If you understand that you're mortal, you would walk gently on the planet. If you understand this, you have no time to quarrel with somebody. This is all that needs to happen to a human being, that they're not willing to deviate and do anything that doesn't truly matter to them. If this much happens to a human being, you have a fantastic humanity, believe me. Isn't it? <laughs> So the ways I've discovered to live a longer, healthier life are to eat right. Like so many long-living people I met, that means natural, super fresh, and not too much processed food. <laughs> also, exercise right. That's finding an exercise you love enough to do regularly and with joy. I've never been one for a gym, but I love yoga. But now I know yoga is not just an exercise, it's also a way to access a calmer mind. Which brings me to the third key secret to a great life, a right <laughs> mind. Finding a way to reduce stress is an absolute must if you want to not only live long, but live happy. I want to live to a ripe old age of happiness, joyfulness, and total self-acceptance. And according to George, drinking wine like this might be a fun way to get there. I'm spitting. <laughs> it helps you drop the stress out. It fills you, it makes you feel much better, more relieved, more free. Do you see how lovingly he looks at this wine? It's a, a you're, you look at it with so much love. Well, wine is something that we make love to. Yeah. <laughs> this is very good energy. Good energy. Yeah.